Praise the Lord. Um, as you may have realized this morning, we didn't sing as many songs as we usually sing. Not because we shouldn't. <coughs> Not because Heidi's got sore fingers. Um, but I feel that uh, we need to break out of um, routine um, somehow. Uh, and somehow the Lord has to help us break out of a routine. Um, we have preached much over the last few weeks um, about the Spirit and about our spirit, and about worshipping God in spirit and truth, and I hope it's been a help uh, to you all. I realise that some of it may have been uh, hard to handle, um, but I believe that, uh, you, know, with, uh, the, you know, our God is so good, even, even though we, you know, we, we are cut sometimes, uh, and, and we are, and, you know, because um, let's face it, when we are in rebuked, um, chastised, <coughs> Uh, you know, we are cut, but thank God that He always adds the oil. Amen? And uh, He always does. And, you, know, we are, you know, even ourselves, because whereas maybe in, in places like Africa, they have that selfish spirit because they have so very little, and then what they get, they want to keep and consume upon themselves. You know, even if they can get somebody else's, they'll still consume it upon themselves. Uh, but of course, we who are rich, because we are, <laughs> amen, let's be honest, uh, you know, we, we can sometimes get, get concerned or, 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 or get defensive when uh, God lays a finger on our weaknesses. True? And, and it's just how it is. But uh, you know what? As, a, as, as I've preached, and I hope you've realized this, that, that with our Lord, you can have your cake and eat it too. It's true. I mean, God is not against rich people. God's not against poor people. God's not against any people. <laughs> Amen? But what God does want from us, what He does require from us, Amen, that we meet His requirements. And, and whether we are rich, poor, or somewhere in the middle, uh, God says, I want everything you have. Because that's the only way He can help us. It's the only way He can get us through. It's the only way He can get us to the finish, this side of heaven. That is for us to give everything to Him completely, so that we can stay in that right love with Him. Amen? That's the only way. Because yeah, that's His promise. His promise was that if you will just give me everything, you know, not only your life, He didn't only want, He wants your house, He wants your, your husband, your wife, he, he wants everything. He wants your money. And not that He wants your money to consume upon Himself. He doesn't want that. God doesn't need those things. God doesn't need houses or money or nothing. Amen. He doesn't want your food. He's a spirit. <laughs> Amen. Uh, you know, uh, God, uh, God makes things. You know, if God needed some gold, He would just speak it, and there it would be. Would it not be? That's what He did 6,000 years ago. Amen. But why does God, God says, give it to me so I can give it back to you? That's what He's saying. So I can give it back to you, if you like. <laughs> I don't know whether you'll believe this or not, but maybe you will, maybe you won't. But you know, when Paul talked in the book of Corinthians about people worshipping idols and worshipping wood and, and all those things, and of course he said it's nothing. But he didn't really say that completely because those people who worship those things, the, a spirit becomes attached to this thing. Okay? A spirit becomes attached to these things. See, people who love the things of this world is because there is a spirit involved. Amen. And that's what God wants to set us free from. That we might put everything in its right place. <laughs> Amen. Not by the force of will, because some people can do that. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit tonight, about the will. Um, but some people have this ability through their own, because they're strong-minded or strong-willed, um, and they're a special breed of people. They really are. Isn't it very, in it's an interesting fact that uh, I think it's 95% of the world's wealth is controlled by 1% of the people. Why is that? What makes those people, and you know what's so very sad is the other 95%, all right, are expending all their energy, all their energy to be the 1%. 
Isn't that odd? <laughs> Why is it? Because there's a spirit involved. And also, you're never going to be that 1% because that's a special kind of people with special kind of powers, if I can put it that way. Amen? So let's not do that. You know, it's wonderful that when uh, we can be thankful in all things. <laughs> Amen? And that's the place that we need to find ourselves, and we'll only be in that place when we see that everything that we have, everything that we possess, is the gift from God. Amen? Because then when you love your husband, you'll love him because God gave him to you. Amen? So your love for God does not diminish. It actually increases, does it not? Amen? So, so that's what he's, you know, so, so please, you know, so God's not after your things. Now he wants everything in the right measure. So this morning, let's, um, <coughs> let's, let's go to um, Isaiah 32. And I just want to read um, verses 1 through 4. It says, Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness, and princes shall rule in judgment. And a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind, and a covert from the tempest, and um, as waters, uh, sorry, as rivers of water in a dry place. Did I get it all then? I thought I, I'm, I'm going to read verse 2 again because I got lost. It's, it's easy to get lost when you only got one eye. Eh? <laughs> and a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind and a covert from the tempest, as rivers of water in a dry place, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. And the eyes of them that shall see shall not be dim, and the ears of them that hear shall hearken. And the heart also of the rash shall understand knowledge, and the tongue of the stammerers shall be ready to speak plainly. And of course, I can understand that last verse there somewhat. Amen. But uh, let's get, you know, clearly here, when we look at the language, what kind of language is it? It's English language, correct? Now, can you see that we're dealing with, with, um, with figurative language? So we're dealing with some form of symbolism. Amen? You know, uh, we are dealing with something spiritual. We're dealing with something that God wants us to understand, not from a physical standpoint. You know, God is not dealing with stammerers. God is dealing with a spiritual people. And you know that you can be a stammerer, Amen. In your heart or, or, or in your spirit, if I can put it that way. Amen. So, to me here, we're dealing with something spiritual earth side. Amen. Or here in the temporal realm. Amen. You know, because we would know, for instance, that in God's heaven, the heaven of God, which is the what heaven? The second heaven. Who, tell, who can tell me the first heaven? Uh, that's right. And where do we read of that heaven? In Genesis chapter 1, we have the firmamental heaven or the heaven that we see. And then, of course, we have the second heaven in where? Ecclesiastes chapter 5. And then we have the third heaven, because it is from what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 12. Because there he mentions the third heaven, and of course, because we are, you know, a very simple people, we understand that if, the, if there's a third, there's a second and a first. Amen. So there we we understand that we have, there's a third heaven that Paul went into or was in, which you understand to be the what heaven is that? The the heaven that Paul went into and spoke of in two Corinthians chapter twelve is what heaven. We call that the spiritual, the ecclesiastical, amen, uh, the unseen, if you like. Amen, uh, Ephesians chapter 2, in Ephesians, uh, you know, it's the one that we sit 
in Christ Jesus. Amen? It's the realm of spirits, if I can put it that way. Amen? Both good spirits and bad spirits. Amen? And, and I want to deal with that somewhat this morning. Amen? So anyway, we, we, we know that uh, here we have a king. It says, Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness. Now we know that's not the heaven of God, because in the heaven of God is not a weary place. And where God is, it's not weary. You know, there is no wind to avoid in the heaven of God. Amen? The heaven of God is not a dry place. But yet here we are told in, in, sorry, in, in um, Isaiah chapter 32 that the king shall establish a kingdom in a dry place, in a weary place. Amen? Or in the midst of a weary and dry place land. Amen? So, you know, when you survey this earth, has there ever been a righteous king? When you think over 6,000 years, has there ever been a literal righteous king? Somebody who rules in justice. Somebody who rules in judgment. Well, you know, there may have been some good people, but uh, in truth, they have all fallen short. Amen. But yet here, we know that there is a righteous king who shall establish a kingdom in a dry land, in a weary land, this side of heaven. Amen. On the temporal side of heaven, or in this element, or in this place that we call time. Who is that king, do you think, this morning? I mean, it's the Lord himself, because in the book of Jeremiah we're told, it says, Behold the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch. Amen? And he shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice, it says here, in the earth. Amen? Not heaven side, but earth side. Now, whether you believe that um, in uh, denotes in you. Remember, in you is you. But he said he didn't say on the earth, but in the earth. Amen. Or whether you believe that we're um, that, that 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 verse is dealing, you know, within the planet we call Earth. It can be, it can be, it can be one or the other, couldn't it? it, it got, he either established a kingdom in you, in because you are of Earth. Your physical body is of earth, it is earth. Remember also in the book of Isaiah, you know, we have, you know, uh, um, the Lord calls out to the earth, earth, earth. You know, he's not speaking to dirt, is he? I mean, you know, God is not that foolish. God is speaking to who? When he says earth, earth, he's speaking to human beings because they're made of earth, is it not? I mean, it's like he's crying out to unsaved people in, in some extent there, do you, do you think? Amen. Yeah, but whether you believe that that verse is dealing with you or whether you believe it's dealing with the earth itself doesn't really matter because we do know that God is dealing with or establishing something within the realm of time. Amen. Or in this temporal place. Amen. So here in, um, uh, in Isaiah 32 we're told that the branch that the Lord Jesus Christ would set up a kingdom this side of heaven. Amen. This side of your heaven, if I can put it that way. Amen. And then it goes on to say this here. It says, And the princes shall rule in judgment. The princes shall rule in judgment. And that kind of uh, took my uh, eye because... Uh, as you know, there are many today who are preaching about a, a millennial reign or the golden age, uh, believing that very soon Jesus Christ is going to come back to establish his kingdom upon the earth, literally. And that every believer is going to rule other people. We're going to, you know, if you've been really good, you get to have London to rule over. If you've been very, not so good, I was going to say very bad, you can't, if you're not so good, you might get, uh, oh, Jenny might get an imbul to rule over, amen, because she likes that kind of thing, apparently. 
the country life, the cowboy life. Um, uh, you know, it depends on how good you are and then what you get to rule over. Well, that's what the belief is. Amen? But uh, it is quite clear here that uh, we're not dealing with that. We're dealing with a spiritual reality. We're dealing with the truth that the kingdom is already here. And that within that kingdom is a king who has what? Princes. Now, who are the princes, do you think? <coughs> huh? Well, yeah, how do we know that? From Revelation, let's quickly just keep your finger there in the book of Isaiah. Go to the book of the Revelation. Revelation 1 verse 5 says, it says, it says, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in our own blood, and hath made us kings and priests, unto God and his Father, to him be glory, dominion forever and ever. Amen. Do you notice that we never ever have to just make things up we always have the Word of God to help us to support what we are saying. Amen? This is not just a made-up story. This is what God says. It is so plain that you think anybody would understand. But everybody does not understand because what kind of book is the Bible? It is a spiritual book to a spiritual people. God has this wonderful power, if you like, and it's, it's an amazing power when you think about it, that He can take written words... And he can either open those written words up to you or not. You know, I think of our sister Linda especially because, you know, she's obviously very well versed in the English language. Who knows that? I mean, she seems very well versed. She speaks very, very well. And she understands the meaning of many, many words. We had another friend like that who sadly passed away. It was Olive. She also had a wonderful uh, understanding of the English language. Amen. Um, and, and, but, but yet, you know, when Linda was unsaved, she could read the words in this book because this book is available anywhere. And she could not understand a single word. Isn't that amazing? That shows me that God has this amazing power. He has this amazing power where he can make written words hide. He can hide them, even though you can read them with your eyes. You can understand the meaning of every single word. But yet God can hide the truth of those words from anybody he chooses. I mean, that is both a blessing, but remember, it's also a curse. I mean, no wonder um, uh, we're told to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Don't make any assumptions that tomorrow when you open up your Bible or open up your electronic book that you're going to understand. Because God can give and God can take it away. Amen? Just like that. Amen? So we always need, we have so many things to be thankful about. And even just the ability to be able to read. We need to be thankful. Because that's probably one of the most important things we have is the ability to read with understanding what God is saying to us or saying to you. Amen? Many, many people uh, read the very same verses that you just mentioned and read, whether it be uh, here in, in uh, Revelation chapter 1, and where, where to me it is so plain and simple that God has made kings and priests that are already ruling upon the earth. I mean, not a future tense, but a present tense. I mean, or a present continuous tense. But yet, God hides that from so many people. Amen. Because their heart is not truly hungering and thirsting for the truth. You see, that's what uh, was meant when, uh, uh, who said it, you know, not to cast your pearls before swine. Amen? A swine is just simply somebody, can be somebody who calls themselves a Christian. Amen? But are not yet ready to take the truth. Because if they receive the truth, they are trampled it underfoot like swine do. You know, have you ever been to a place where they have pigs? Amen? And, and you throw food in there, 
and, and the pigs will just trample it underfoot. And you know what they've said is, is that they, they will actually go through the mud and the grime to find a little piece of bread. Amen. After they've trampled it underfoot. Amen. Uh, God will not allow his word to be trampled under. He will close it off. Amen. He will shut it up. Amen. So here in Revelation chapter 1 verses 5 and 6, it tells us that God has made kings and priests. He have made them. Amen. Now how are we made kings and priests? Yes, of course, when we are born again. Amen. Now, now how are we born again? Yes, we are. <laughs> we're getting there. Come on, somebody help me here. Yes, we're, that's it. Now, now, that's it. That's the one I wanted to hear. Amen. Through death, through death and resurrection, the baptism of Christ that is with the Holy Ghost, we are actually, now here's the important thing, we are made new creatures. Yeah, this is important because if you don't have the revelation of this, you miss it. See, it's a bit like uh, some people quote the scripture in, in John, is it John 8? Uh, I think it's John 8 where it says, um, the truth have... Yeah, but, but some, yeah, the truth shall make you free. But see, some people, many people read that and say the truth will set you free. There's a big difference between being set free, because to be set free means you can get caught again, than being made free. You need to understand this morning that when you were born again, you were remade. And if you don't have this revelation, you will struggle. You were made new through a real death and a real baptism. When God brought you up, He brought you up in the Spirit, He made you completely new. If we could see it, if we had the capacity to see into the realm of the Spirit physically, and you could see a picture of your old self spiritually, and a picture of your new self spiritually, they would be completely different. Completely different because you have been made free. I mean, you have been made a new creature. You have been made a prince. I mean, you need to understand that, that you are completely different. Regenerated to what you were when you were unsaved. The problem that you and I face is we need to believe that by faith. Because when you begin to believe that by faith, you'll begin to walk as you. Do you understand what I'm saying? See, if you don't believe that by faith, you'll walk as you were, but a little bit better. But if you truly believe you have been made a prince, you have been made a new creature, then you need to begin to walk completely new. What did Paul say? Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You need to believe that. You can't take the old and make it new. Old is old. Amen. Everything from your new birth to the south is old. That's gone. Amen. What you were is not what you are now. But you need to believe that by faith. Remember, the realm of the unseen is the realm of faith. That's why God says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, says what? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen? It is the realm of worship. It is the realm of truth. 
true? Remember in Hebrews 11 verse 6 it says what? But without faith... You know, this is interesting. To me this is very... You know, when, like when, when, when I see verses that are so definitive, that are so explicit... I mean, but without faith it is, impo- it is impossible to please him, for he that comes to God must. That means I can't come any other way. I can't come with half. I can't come with so-so. I can't come with I'll try. You know, someone's saying, well, I'll just try harder. No, God's not accepting anything try harder. Try harder is you. I mean, God's already told you that you must give you to him. If you're trying harder, that means that you've walked out of him and are now doing it under your own physical faculties. God says, no, I don't want, I want, you must worship me, you you must worship me in spirit and truth. I mean, I'm not, he says, I'm not interested in what you can do through your physical, all right, because if we're going to do things by our physical faculties, Some of us would be very good, and some of us would be very bad. Amen? And that's just the truth. Some of of, uh, you are better equipped physically than others. Amen? Some of you are stronger in your brain. Some of you are stronger in your physical body. Some of you are, and the list can go on and on and on. Amen? So remember, God's no respecter of persons. But your spirit is the same has the exact same capabilities. I mean, you can do exactly the same thing. There is not a stronger one and a weaker one. I mean, there is not one that's uh, uh, short and the other one is tall. Amen? The spirit is spirit. That's what God says, you must worship me in spirit and in truth. But then over there in, in, in Hebrews chapter 11, it says we must believe. He that come, must believe. What? That he is. That he is. And that he's a a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. But you see, so worship and faith. See, worship and faith, same thing. It's the exact same thing. You know, uh, in in, uh, John chapter 4, Jesus did not say that true worshippers must worship him in faith. He said we must worship him in spirit and truth. Amen? He didn't tag anything on. So all these things are together. Together. And, 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 and the revelation of faith will come to you once you begin to have a revelation of who you are. You have been made new. You are not as you were. You may think you are. Well, you need to get that out of your your mind out of your carnal self and begin to see yourself of what you truly are. You have been made a prince. And then we say we need to begin to believe and act like, if you're going to put it that way. Begin to walk like who you are. You are not an ordinary person. You are not like every other human being. You are not. You may look like every other human being on the outward, but inward you are very different. Amen? You know, this, this, this physical thing is just a covering. It's, all, it's just clothing. That's all it is. But the true you is completely different to anybody else who calls themselves a human being. And you need to believe that. You need to accept that. You have been made a prince. Uh, it says, it says, and princes shall rule in judgment. Amen. Now, that word rule had me kind of thinking. Because obviously when we think of the word rule, we naturally think we're going to be ruling something. Somebody else. You know, because we love to be the, who loves to be the boss? Brother Tim, get your hand up. Come on. Come on, your wife will look the other way. <laughs> But most of us, and let's be true, we like to be the boss. How do I know that? 
Don't shake your head because it's true. I'll prove it to you right now. No, listen to me. No, everybody has this thing that we want to be the boss. Okay, if I told you to do, if I told Sandra to go and do something she didn't want to do, all right, what would happen? Would, you, would, would we see her get a little bit fidgety? Why? Because she wants to be the boss. See, that's within every carnal person. I want to be the boss. I want to rule something or somebody else. Amen. And so people who, especially believers who, 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 who have this, this, this weakness, if you like, and, and carnality is a weakness, we can begin to see these things as ruling. That's why we have this belief that this new Jerusalem is going to come down. Jesus is going to come and sit in, in, in a temple in Jerusalem. And he's going to give you power to rule other people. But that is not what that word rule means. That word rule means dominion. It means subjection. But not over anybody else, but yourself. I mean, it's a rule of self. It really is to make prince. To make a prince. <laughs> Amen. It's, it's just like Paul was saying in, in 1 Corinthians 9 verse 28, where he said that he put, him, he put his body in subjection. He ruled, in other words, he ruled his body. He had power over his body. I mean, and he knew that he had to have that power because if he didn't, he would himself become a castaway. Even though he may have preached the gospel to hundreds and to thousands, even though he may have worked miracles, amen, even though he may have done so much good for the kingdom of God, he knew that if he did not rule himself, if he did not have the power to rule himself, he himself would miss out. He himself would become a castaway. He himself would become unsaved and put out of God's kingdom. So, yes, God made you a prince. I mean, the righteous king has made you a prince. He has made you free. He has made you a new creature. He's made you with this extraordinary power of God to be able to rule yourself. You're an unsafe person can't rule themselves. You know, they say, I won't, but they do. Yes. Have you noticed that? I shouldn't, but I shall. Amen. They know they shouldn't, but they do, or they shall. But you have an extraordinary power that is not willpower, but God's power, that you're able to say no, and your no is no. And you're able to say yes, and your yes is yes. Amen. Isn't that wonderful this morning? I mean, you know, but to do this, you must believe. To do this, you must believe that you are extraordinary, peculiar, that you're holy. I mean, that you have been wonderfully made, remade. You must believe that. You must see that in the eye of the Spirit, if I can put it that way, in the eye of your Spirit, that you are no longer the old calf. A man who was this and that and wishy wishy washy and you know and and, and all these things. Amen. I uh, you are now different. Your yes is your yes and your no is your no. In hardness, no, in love. Amen. We we don't we don't uh, 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 how do I put it? We don't subject out of willpower. We subject out of love. Our love for God. Amen. And the power that he has put uh, within us. Amen. So uh, here it says, And the princess shall rule in judgment. <clears throat> Amen. Or we shall submit ourselves in judgment. Or, <clears throat> again, opposite to self-will. That there is a reason or a power that makes us Simon says, by judgment. You know, when you tip over a couple of verses, you go to, you go to um, a couple of chapters to Isaiah 33 and verse 5, and can somebody turn to, for me to Job 29 verse 14, and Isaiah 1 and verse 27. Um, <clears throat> 
But in, in Isaiah 33, in verse 5, it says, The Lord is exalted, for he dwelleth on high. He filled Zion. He hath filled. Now, it He hath filled Zion with judgment and righteousness. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. What does it say in Isaiah 127, somebody? Zion shall be redeemed with judgment. Ah, Zion shall be redeemed with judgment. And her converts with her con convicts, converts <laughs> with righteousness. What does it say? What did Job testify to? Job 29, verse 14. What did God do for him? That's what you need. But you're winning. I put on righteousness and he clothed me. And my judgment was as a robe and a diadem. Who clothed him? God did. Amen. Who clothed in in whom are we hid? In Christ. Who is our righteousness? Christ is. Amen. What is uh, judgment and righteousness? It's the truth, it's the Word, it's the Spirit. I mean, again, go right to the two witnesses. It's the Spirit and the truth. I mean, we keep ourselves, we rule ourselves by the Spirit and by the truth. Amen? When we look at Isaiah 32, why did God have that there. Why did he have Isaiah write that? What is the revelation do you think that God wants us to understand? What kind of language is it? What, what is the impression you get? Yes, yes, yeah, all those things. But do you notice that it really is showing us that we're in a spiritual battle. It talks about us, about being hid by that rock. I mean, it, telling us that we are in the midst of a dry place. Telling us that we're in a place that's weary. True? Just telling us really that, hey, we need to be on guard because we are in a spiritual battle. What is the battle? What is the battle all about? Yes. So what is the what is the warfare really about? Who said what? I heard a word. Truth. Truth. That's it. The battle is truth. Truth. You see, again, just keep your finger where it is and turn with me quickly to Revelations 21. I, I could never quite... <coughs> Revelations 21 and verse 27. It says, And there shall in no wise enter into it, talking about the new Jerusalem, amen, the church of God, the kingdom, anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie. And you know, lies are most difficult to deal with. If you're in business, at work, at home. You know, a little white lie. Ever had one of those? Yeah, a little white lie is not being completely honest. Maybe not telling a gross lie, but withholding some of the information. You see, most people cannot stop lying. They think they're lying for good. People think that when they lie, at times they're doing something good. But God says, you know, I was thinking, you know, I can't understand, you know, murderers and rapists and, 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 and uh, you know, uh, all those kind of people, you know, bad, wicked people, you know, Adolf Hitler, 
You know, uh, I, I can understand those kind of people, the people who bomb people, and I, I, you know, uh, I can understand them and, and those who, who, who simply blaspheme God. Amen. And, and, and so, I can, you know, devil worshippers, I can understand them not getting into the kingdom because they don't want to. But somebody does a little white lie. That can't be that bad. That's hard to. But God equates that. God specifically mentions that. Do you see that? It's one of those shall nots. <laughs> because if you do, He says you don't get it. You know, we can be here. That's fine. We can be in the church. That's fine. But we need to get into something spiritual where God holds the key <laughs> and he says, you don't get in. You see, the warfare is the truth. And sometimes we want to shield people from the truth because we feel the truth will hurt them. Huh? Well, I don't want to hurt their feelings. That's because you don't have the revelation yet of who you're talking to. That's because you just want to live by what you see and what you hear. You're not looking beyond the clothing and seeing the real person inside. Amen. You are not speaking spirit to spirit. Because you don't even believe who you are. True? What did Jesus say? This John 8. It's, it's in John 8 somewhere, isn't it? Let's quickly turn there. I know we're kind of going off topic, but I uh, just want to help me. Forget about you. <laughs> just me. John 8, what? John 8 and verse 32. <clears throat> he says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And then somewhere down further it says the same thing. It's verse 36. It says, If the Son therefore shall make you free, now this shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. And of course that word indeed is what? That means actual. That, that means not a positional making, but a actual making. Amen? You know, it's because, you know, that's the difference between Old Testament salvation and the New Testament salvation. The Old Testament salvation was positional. Amen? You, you just stayed as you were, but God moved you. Whereas New Testament salvation is what? It's a state, it's a reality. And that you have been actually changed. And you have become a new person. Amen? That's what truth does today. It makes somebody new. Amen? It makes them able to be free. Not set free. We can set people free by playing with their minds. But the only problem with that is what? On Monday morning, they get caught again. I mean, even here, you know, we can talk about truth and about lying right here today. And for the rest of the day, you can hold the line. But tomorrow morning, when you know, the job's at stake, I mean, when the business deal's at stake, what are you going to do then? You see, what are we going to do then? And of course, that then goes to what you are. You see. And that's the truth. That is the truth. You know, you might think, well, you know, I don't have to tell them this bit. But you're telling a little white lie. You're not giving the other person the information that you have so that person can make their right choice. See, that's what the world does. But that's not what we do. Why don't we do that? Why don't we do that? Why, 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 why are we quite happy to reveal the truth? Sorry, say that? 
because it is always win win no matter what the other person does it's always win 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 for us because we have the revelation that God is doing it anyway true because we believe that God holds our lives and that God is directing our lives. And if we lose something or miss something or whatever because of the truth, you may well find that down the track it was a good thing to miss. It was a good thing to lose. True? God says the truth will make you free. Hallelujah. Amen. These are just wonderful revelations that if we would just get them into our heart of hearts, we'd be a different people. He have made you a prince to rule in judgment. Amen. But anyway, let's go back. We're off. To, let's go back to the topic again. God's for us. Amen. God didn't save you to put you down. God didn't save you to lose. Amen. Uh, put us, God didn't save you to put you in the gutter. In fact, for most of us here, can truly testify that when we were saved, we were in the gutter, both spiritually and literally. True? And I'll tell you what, God has only done good for us. Yet yeah, we still aren't, uh, you know, we still struggle from time to time. <laughs> Amen, as, as most people do. But I'll tell you what, if it comes to the physical side of things, we're much better today than what we were when we were saved. And that is not through lying and cheating. Amen, or withholding from God. True? Isn't that true, uh, true for you? Sister Anne, is that true for you? Amen. That's how good our God is. So you know, don't think for a moment that, that I'm trying to put down, amen, what God does for us in every facet of our lives, because I'm not. But we need to be thankful for that and see where it came from. <laughs> amen. He's been so good to us. But we also need to realize that we're in a spiritual warfare. And we t- you know, when we turn to Ephesians chapter 6 and, and verse 12, tells us, for we wrestle not. <laughs> we wrestle not. Flesh and blood. <laughs> oh, we, so we are in a wrestle then. Uh, I'm going to come and just stop, but we wrestle not. Why did Paul just run out of ink or something like that? <laughs> Amen. Why didn't the typewriter ribbon just stop then? <laughs> you know, well, why didn't the computer keys just kind of get stuck then <laughs> for we wrestle not again oops so we are in a wrestle for we wrestle not against flesh and blood you see if we were wrestling flesh and blood it would be easy wouldn't it you know whoever was the strongest whoever had the biggest gun well, that's, hey, listen, hey, that's how it was during the Dark Ages, you know, some of the, some, you know, and some of the Protestants, they, they thought that uh, if they had the biggest guns and the, and the fastest horses or biggest swords, fastest horses, uh, they could go and win the kingdom literally for Jesus Christ. You know, the Crusaders and, and people like that. And they, they just thought, look at, look at some of these other religions today, like the Muslims. They think that they can win by fighting flesh and blood. That nobody can defeat the Spirit of God by flesh and blood. Amen? Praise God for that. But it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. Now when we think about that, principality and powers, not necessarily speaking of a kingdom, but certainly speaking of Something that is organized. Something that has rule and authority. We are wrestling against something 
that is spiritual, that has both rule and authority. It says, against the rulers of darkness of this world. Now look, we can simply put our heads in the sand and just think, well, as long as I just pray and give in my tithe and just work for God, that everything will be fine. And I just turn, my, just, just turn away from any idea that there's something fighting me. But something is fighting you, whether you believe it or not. That's what Paul says. He says we wrestle not against, it says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers of darkness of this world. Now, of course, the rulers of darkness of this world can be human instrumentalities that are empowered by evil spirits or evil spiritual powers. And the more I dwell upon this, I think that's what it is. Because just as you are in the kingdom of God, amen, and, 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 and if you like, work for and stand on behalf of God as human beings, clothed in a, in, 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 in a, in, in a, in, in a human clothing, if you like, you know, skin, we have also other human beings who are empowered by evil spirits. Amen? Uh, or the influence of spirits who work against the people of God. Then it goes on, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now what does that tell me where this warfare is? That's right, the warfare is in the realm of the unseen. If you don't know who you are, if you don't know in whom you are seated, if you don't know what you are, you'll never see what is coming against you. I mean, why must we worship God in spirit and truth? Why must we come to God in faith believing that He is? Because we are dealing with reality. We're dealing with something that's very real. God wants you to know that what is coming against you is real. And that this battle is in the realm of the spirit or in the realm of the unseen. Why do you as a believer believe or, or why, why, what is it within us that at times would have us tell a white lie? What is it that makes us do something we know we ought not to do? I'll tell you what, it is a wind that comes against you that you give in to. See, you have been made new. You have been made free. But you are not immune from the wind. You're not immune from the weariness. You're not immune from the dry places. But you do have a hiding place, which is in Christ. True? True? We need to understand that we wrestle, that we're in a fight. Any, any wonder that Paul often uses in his testimony the word fight. You know, I have fought the good fight of what? Faith. What did he instruct Timothy to do? Many times, well many times, as, as much as in the word of God, I mean he likened Timothy to a soldier. And told him also to have a good warfare. You can have a bad warfare if you're not careful. I mean, you need to realize that you are fighting spirits. You are coming against, you're not coming against other human beings. You're coming against other spirits. And the same token, they are coming against you. Amen? And just because you wave the white flag, does not mean they're going to stop coming. True? Was it, did I say Ephesians 6? Yeah, I did. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the... The whole armour. 
if you miss, well, I don't need my sword today. I'm just going down the road. <laughs> no, no, it, it's the whole armour. If you don't have the whole armour, you might as well have none. Well, you know, I don't need the breastplate today. No one's going to try and stab me in the heart. That's what it says. So stop, stop the enemy from stabbing you in the heart. I don't need it today. I'm just going to see brother such and such or sister such and such. No, no, if, if you're not going to wear, wear the breastplate, don't wear anything because you've got to put on the whole armour of God. I mean, maybe one of the uh, preachers could actually teach Amen. On the armor of God, just, 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 just do it line upon line and precept upon precept. We can see the importance of what Paul is saying. He, he would not have said put on the whole armor if that's not what he meant. Amen. And he said, he said above all, pray. And pray for the ministers. That's all part of the armor of God. If you leave one out, you might as well wear none of it. Amen? That's what he's basically saying. Put on the whole armour of God. Amen? You see, my brothers and sisters, this world is a hard and dry place. It is a weary place. It is like, a dry place is likened to what? What is, what, what is a dry place? A desert. Have any of you ever been in the desert when you get towards the evening? Some of us who went to the States many, many years ago, when we were down in the Arizona region, we, we, we actually experienced this. What happens? It gets very cold. No, not, no, initially it does not get very cold. The first thing that happens is the wind begins to blow. And it's a warm, hot wind. Amen? It is a warm and hot wind. What is wind? It's just air, isn't it? It's just air. But what is air? It's invisible. You can't see it. <laughs> Amen? You know, in Ephesians chapter 2, in Ephesians chapter 2, who is likened to air? The prince of the power of the air. You know, uh, is, is the devil and his, and his, and his, and his spirits, are, are they just air? <gasps> just sucked a few of them in. <laughs> maybe if I use a filter, I'll be all right. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe we, hey, I tell you what, we could start something and make a few shekels. All right? We could convince people that the air is full of devils. And we could have special handkerchiefs or whatever, and we just write the word of God on there. Hey, and, and we'd be able to sell them. <laughs> huh? Well, it's not a bad idea. <laughs> There's enough gullible people. Remember when uh, we were at, um, at at the Jordan River and they started little bottles of water. Amen. <laughs> Bowls of water. You know, the river water from the Jordan. <laughs> and people buy that kind of stuff because they think there's something spirit. Maybe there's some of Jesus. <laughs> well, she got a bit of it. <laughs> Air represents spirit, doesn't it? Amen? And, and so really, you know, when you, are when, when you are fulfilling the lust of the flesh, or when you used to fulfill the lust of the flesh, what was happening? You were, amen? Satan, as a spirit, was ruling your heart. But now that you have been born again, what's the truth? You're still ruled by air. True. But now, our Lord Jesus Christ rules your life by a spirit in your heart. True. You know, people are under a 
delusional mind condition where they believe they run their own lives. No, you don't. <laughs> Nobody does. I mean, if uh, you think you're ruling yourself, you're really you're ruled by evil spirits. That's why you can't do, that's why unsaved people can, unsaved people can never do what they say. Why, why you hear them saying, well, you know, I want to, but I can't. Why don't you stop drinking? Well, I can't. I would like to, but I can't. Why don't you stop smoking? Well, I'd like to, but I can't. Well, what prevents them from stopping? There is a spirit involved. There's a spirit involved. And some of us who used to smoke would understand that there was a spirit involved. You wanted to stop. Your willpower said no. But there was something greater. Amen? Uh, it's true, isn't it? Amen. See, we are in a warfare against spirits. True? I've got here um, Ephesians 4. Let's see what that is. Somebody turn to um, Matthew 12, verse 43, because we need to wind this up. Ephesians 4, verse 14 says, That we be henceforth no more children tossed to and fro and carried about by every... Wind of doctrine. Well, what is wind? wind? Wind has to do with the spirit. Who spreads false doctrines? Confusing doctrines. People don't. But people who are under the influence or controlled by spirits that are against the truth. What does uh, Matthew 12 verse 43 say? Then I'll finish with this. Sorry, when the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places and finding none. That's what the evil is. He walks through dry places that findeth none. And if you read on, well, what does he want to do? What is that? When you were born again, and the evil spirit left you. What does it want to do? It walks around in the dry places. What does it want to do? It wants to come back. It wants to come back. If you don't realize that, you'll stop fighting. It wants to come back. Amen? You may not be, you, you may not now be under the power of an evil spirit. I hope you're not under the power of God. But that does not stop the wind blowing. True? That's why in Isaiah 32, it, it, he is our hiding place. That's why he's the rock that overshadows us. He protects us from those things, but it does not stop the wind coming against us. True? You see, I'll finish with this one thought. Revelation 16, verse 17. Is that the one I wanted? No, it's not. Huh? Eh? Where? The seventh angel out Yeah, where's that? Revelations. Oh, I'm in 17. No wonder I'm struggling here. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. Well, we know it's not in the atmosphere, don't we? It's got to do with spirits. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, it is done. Now, I realize that this verse has a wider meaning. But when you were born again, this is what happened. 
God emptied a vial, a vial of judgment, into the air. Amen? The spirits that were controlling you. And when he had done that, he said what? It is done. He made you free. He delivered you from those spirits, did he not? Amen? You see, this morning, when we think of what God has done for us, and he has done so much for us, but we need to get a revelation of the realm of the unseen. We need to realize who we are. We need to realize that God has made us not only to be a people of faith, but a people of worship. A people of love who love him above all else. We need to understand that no matter what wind blows, doesn't matter what circumstance surrounds us, that we have a hiding place. Amen? We need to realize also that when winds come against us, what they actually are. When difficulties come your way, to know what they actually are. Amen? You see, I think it was last week or the week before we looked in the book of Acts where you know, Paul especially was able to discern the voice of the Spirit. How? Did the Spirit speak to him explicitly? I, I don't believe so. But he could discern what was a good wind and a bad wind. Amen? And we need to be able to do the same. He knew in his heart of hearts that it was not good at that moment to go to that place. Not because it was a stop sign, but because he felt a wind. Amen? And so it needs to be for us this morning. Amen? You know, it's a wonderful when you think about some of the verses in the Bible, you know, that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If God be for you, who can be against you? Can you think of any others? Wonderful promises of God. And we need to remember some of these, know some of these. Amen? Amen. So what? Amen. Well, that really is, again, Isaiah 32. We get the revelation of what he's saying. You know, my brothers and sisters, I am trying to break us loose from formality. I'm trying to say to us, look, let's stop three songs, a prayer, and a message. I'm saying that we need to come with a heart that is worshipful because you have a revelation of what he has made you into and what God is doing for you every single day. Amen. He protects you from that hot wind, doesn't he? Amen. When those evil spirits come against you, he is your refuge. He is your strong tower, is he not? I'm saying, my brother, says, when we be, you know, the Word of God tells us to dwell upon good things. Those are the good things. Those are the things that help us to come to this place especially and to just simply lose ourselves in the goodness of God. Amen? When we lose our own self-consciousness, see, that's evil spirits. Just because we're in this place here, in this, does not mean the wind can't blow. The hot wind can't blow. It does. Just because you're in here this morning does not mean that this cannot be a weary place. It can be. But by faith, knowing who you are, you can have victory. And you can worship God in spirit and in truth. I'm suggesting, my brothers and sisters, that we need many more testimonies. You need to come with a heart full of testimony. Amen. Of thanksgiving for what God has done for you. Amen. It can be the same testimony week in, week out. It does not matter as long as it's not a habit.
true. You know, we need to tell God how good he is. He likes that. He already knows he's good, but... <laughs> I'm saying, God, help us. Amen? You know, if you're in the kingdom of God, what is the kingdom? It's not. <laughs> Meat and... But it's what? Righteousness. Peace. And joy. It's a joyful place. You see, the new creature has been made joyful. True? You know, if we're walking around sternly and, you know, and, and, and uh, oppressed and depressed, we even know there's a hot wind blowing. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, man, that, uh, hey, that's not what God made me. Hey, man, I'm, I'm not being a prince, but I'm like that. True? I'm not being whom God made me. I'm, 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 I'm going back to the old way. You know, some of us behave and act the way we do because we have just learned a habit. We've just learned to be difficult out of a habit. It's a habit. We've, we've just acquired a habit. We just want to be difficult. We just want to look stern. We just want to look angry. We just want to show people that I'm the boss. That's no, just the old habit. And that's meant to have passed away. True, that's the old flesh that people get sick and tired of. True? You know, when we are behaving like that, do we feel good? You know, that's the old thing. Sometimes we act in particular ways because we're hard-necked to prove something. Watch out for the door on the way out. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, but, we, but, but when we start behaving like that we don't feel good ourselves so what's the point let's walk in the spirit let's just be thankful for what he's done in us let us walk as the new creature Maybe then we'd see some family members saved. Huh? Let us recognize what is causing us to be what we are. Whether it be the hot winds of evil spirits or the good wind of God. And discern between the two. True? Smile off your face. Because you need to hear this message. <laughs> In the right edge. Your mother needs to hear this message, right? <laughs> anyway, praise the Lord. Let's stop there. Uh <laughs>